Hi, my name is Cynthia Riccio. I'm the Director of Education here at the Webb Dean Stevens Museum. During this time of COVID, when we can't have you here in person, we are bringing you some of our favorite education programs via video. Today with me, I have Katie Sullivan, one of our educators here at the museum, and she will be talking to you about Colonial Foodways. Hello, welcome to the home of Silas Dean, one of Weathersfield's wealthiest residents. Today we're going to go into his kitchen and learn how foods were prepared and preserved in the colonial time. Now we're in the kitchen of the Silas Dean house. As you look around the kitchen, do you see anything missing from this kitchen that you have in your kitchen at home? That's right, there's no refrigerator in this kitchen, but it's very important to keep foods cold so that they don't spoil. So let's talk about some of the ways foods were preserved in the colonial time. During the colonial period, people called the springtime the hungry time. The reason for that is that fruits and vegetables were no longer being able to be harvested. So it was very important that they preserve their fruits and vegetables from the year before in order to have them to get through the winter and the spring until the harvest comes in again. One of the ways to do that is through drying. And you'll see here that we have herbs hanging over the fireplace. This way they can dry them and use them in their cooking. Also, they would preserve things like apples by slicing them up, hanging them usually in the attic, and then they were able to use them until the next harvest. Another way of preserving foods is to take the original food and change it into something else. One example of this is cheese. They would take their milk and change it into cheese, and that's something that was easily stored and something that they ate a lot of during that time. Another use for milk was to make butter. They would use a churn, such as this, and you would go up and down with the churn in order to get air into the butter, into the milk, and eventually it would become butter. So we're going to do that today. We have our jar of heavy cream, and we're going to shake it until it turns into butter. One of the other things you noticed that was missing in this kitchen was a stove or an oven. They actually did have a way to cook food, but it was much different than what we do today. They would cook their food here over the open fire. Soups and stews would be cooked right here directly over the fire, but they also cooked food out here. They would bring coals out, put the pans over it, and cook the food right out here on the hearth. And that's why we call this hearth cooking. In addition to cooking on the hearth, we were also doing a lot of baking in this kitchen. The cook would come here to what's called the beehive oven. She would set a fire inside the oven and let it burn down until the bricks got very, very hot. She'd then put the food inside and there would be a door that would close in the front. Does this look familiar to any of you? You may have seen this at your local pizza parlor. And here we are. Our butter is all finished and ready to have on our crackers at our tea party. An important part of colonial life was the tea party. And there were a lot of rules of etiquette associated with the tea party. For example, you would never ask your hostess for more just in case she didn't have more to offer. So as you finished your tea, she would just keep refilling your cup. But what happens if you don't want any more tea? Well, then you would simply turn your cup over and put your spoon across the top. And this would be a signal to your hostess that you were finished and didn't care for any more tea. When the pandemic is over, I hope you'll join us here at the Webb Dean Stevens Museum for our Food Waste program. We look forward to seeing you then.